Hey guys, HDV here and welcome to a brand new video. Today, I'm going to be showing you how to get all 14 starter Pokemon before beating Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. Now, unfortunately, you will have to get the national decks, but luckily, at the same time, you only have to see all 150 Pokemon in the Sinnoh decks in this game. You don't have to catch every single one. We do have a trading section in the Discord in the description down below if you do need help completing your decks. But today, we're going to cover every single starter Pokemon, all their locations and the best ways to get them so if you're excited for the video drop a like down below leave a comment subscribe if you're brand new with all of that out of the way let's get into the video so starting things off we're going to be taking a look at how to get pikachu in pokemon brilliant diamond and shining pearl so in order to get this star pokemon you need to fly to heart home city and then go south towards the trophy garden the trophy garden is a really really good place to find a bunch of cool pokemon but we're only interested in pikachu so you go down here towards the trophy garden it is only a 10 percent spawn rate which is a little bit unfortunate and that is both in the day and the night but if you have a pokemon with the ability static at the front of your team it should not take you long at all there is a few pokemon that do have static you can even find a pichu in this grass which will have static you could get a i don't know a mareep or something if someone could trade you that across but anyway you go into the trophy garden and then just run around for as long as you want again like i said you need to put a Pokemon with the static ability at the front of your team to give you the best odds. I was running around trying to find a Pikachu for ages and I was like, wait, I've got static. Put it in and then straight away I found a Pichu, which again, you could catch if you don't already have static, which is also a 10% chance to find. And then you could put that at the front of your team. But hopefully it won't take you that long to find a Pikachu. It is only a 1 in 10 chance. Um, so hopefully you will find it very soon. But as you can see, we have found a Pikachu in the Trophy Garden. Now you can also find Eevee in the Trophy Garden as well. But I think that's a little bit more rare. That's either like a 1% or a 5% chance or something. I'm also not sure if Eevee spawns there until the post game. Not 100% sure about that, but in anyway, we're going to talk about how to get Eevee in a second. To get Pikachu, just go to the Trophy Garden, have a Pokemon with Static to make your life a lot easier, but that is how you find the first starter Pokemon. Next up, we're moving on how to find Eevee. Now again, you need the National Dex for this encounter, but once you have it, go to Heart Home City, go to the house on the right of the Pokemon Center, which is Bay Bay's house, and you go and talk to her, and she just says, been a long time, how's it going, using the PC boxes, Oh, looky here, that's a national Pokedex I'm seeing. Good for you. And then she says, you'll be using my boxes like crazy if you're using that now. Well, I always thought a good trainer ought to juggle boxes smartly, though. I shouldn't be the one to say so. Oh, yeah, do you want a Pokemon called Eevee? Of course you want a Pokemon called Eevee. Here you go. Now you be good to it. So that is how you obtain Eevee in Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. Again, you need the national decks in order to have this encounter, but you don't need to beat the game. You just need to get the national decks, which obviously is achievable before you actually beat the game, um, which is why you can technically get every single starter Pokemon before even fighting the Elite Four. So your team could actually be like completely different than the normal Sinnoh um, team. But anyway, put them in your box if you want. Um, and then evolve them into whichever evolution to your heart's content. Next up, we're going to be going over the starter Pokemon. Now, something that I definitely advise you to do is in your secret base, put that type of starter Pokemon in uh, the base and all the statues and stuff like that. So what I mean by that is um, you can basically find these shiny statues in the underground. And then if you, I don't know, find like a fire type statue, that will make fire type Pokemon appear a lot more frequently. You don't need to do this. But it just makes life a lot easier. As you can see, I've got a bunch of electric type Pokemon statues here. We don't want that. We'll go for water type starter Pokemon first. So you can easily just filter through the types. Go down to water. Click that bad boy. And then it will show you all your water shiny statues. I've spent a lot of time in the underground, which is why I've got a lot of statues. But I'm just going to throw a ton of water type Pokemon statues in my base. Which will allow uh, water Pokemon to appear more frequently in Obviously, that's what I want if I'm going for the water starter Pokemon. Um, so, yeah, you don't, like I say, need to do this. It just makes life a little bit easier because other Pokemon can spawn in the biomes. Like, in the water biomes, you can still get, like, flying types and normal types and stuff like that. You don't really want those. You kind of just want water types. This won't stop all the other types appearing. It'll just give you a much higher chance of the water type Pokemon appearing, which is, of course, what you want. So fill as many statues as you possibly can. And as you can see, the statue effects has sharply raised the appearance of water type Pokemon. Um, so once you've done that, you can go to any of the water biomes. 
I'm below Eterna City right now, uh, and there's a water biome right on the right of uh, my secret base, which is quite useful. There's also the grassland biome at the bottom, um, which you can see on the top left of your screen. It's like the green kind of square. So that could be a good place where you find grass type Pokemon. But all you need to do now is just keep going in and out of the water biomes until you find all of the water starts Pokemon. So as you can see on your screen right now, there is a Mudkip. This didn't take me that long to find, to be fair. Mudkip kind of popped up straight away. Um, and they're all, well, the levels depend on how far you are in the game. Um, of course, I've beaten the game, so all of these Pokemon are going to be quite high leveled. This Mudkip is a level 50, 60. Bloody hell, Jesus, level 60. Uh, they can also have Egg Moves as well, which is really, really useful. So that's Mudkip. Here we have Squirtle, the same biome. Again, just keep going in and out. Um, you don't, it will get annoying because other Pokemon will kind of like bump into you because the hitboxes in this game are kind of busted. Um, but at the same time, it's a small price to pay to get every single star Pokemon, which is why the Grand Underground is such a good idea because it just allows you to get all of these Pokemon. You don't have to trade for them or anything. Uh, up next, we've got Piplup. Again, you can keep like going for these starters to try and get the egg moves like totodile for instance has some really really nice egg moves i think he gets like dragon dance i think he gets like ice punch a really really nice egg move so if you want to find out all the different egg moves and stuff it's on one like the like cerebi and whatever um but that is the piplup encounter so that's three of the four starters and then the final starts pokemon is of course totodile which we now find Again, it's just the original four starters. You can't get the Gen 5 water starter, Gen 6, Gen 7, or Gen 8. It's just up to the Generation um, 4 starters. But again, that's still 14 starter Pokemon, um, which is obviously great. I mean, why wouldn't you want that? Um, so that's all of the water starter Pokemon. Uh, and again, you can get them in any biomes where water appears. Next up, we're going to see how to get all the grass starts Pokemon. Again, I've just put a bunch of grass type statues in my secret base. And again, this is still under Eterna City. I go south from my secret base uh, and then to this big green square. Again, when you come in from Eterna City, you will drop on like the right hand side of it. Um, but again, you just need to find the big green square. And then a bunch of grass Pokemon will uh, spawn here. As you can see, Oddish is right there. And again, the same tactic. Just keep coming in and out of this uh, biome. And as you can see, there is a Bulbasaur there, which is the first starter Pokemon that I found. I actually think I found these all in order. I think I found Bulbasaur, Chikorita, and then Trico, then Turtwig. Or it might have been Turtwig and Trico. Either way, that's the Gen 1 starter right there, Bulbasaur. Again, they do have egg moves, so you can just constantly catch these until you get the best kind of moves on these Pokemon. Uh, next up, we'll find Chikorita. Uh, the grass starters actually took me quite a while to find. Between Chikorita and then Turtwig, it was like a solid five minutes. But then I found Turtwig and Trico in like the same biome. Because you can find multiple starters in one biome. Because with the fire starters, I found all three in one, which is kind of busted. Um, but yeah. It is just generally down to look. I don't know what the percentage chance of these Pokemon appearing is, but uh, you will be able to find all of them with a lot of trial and error and a lot of uh, commitment. As you can see, there is a Turtwig there, um, so he's just minding his own business. Uh, but as as I leave and then I re-enter, I do find a Turtwig and a Trico in the same biome. Um, but again, it's just useful because the Grass Starters, the Fire Starters, the War Starters... Like, why wouldn't you want all these on your team? Like, you're actually just spoiled for choice with how many Pokemon you can have on your team if you do get the National Dex before you take on the Elite Four. Uh, but anyway, as you can see, I exit this biome, and then I re-enter it, and to my surprise, I have a Trico and a Turtwig um, in the same biome, which is kind of crazy. Um, but yeah, there is Trico, uh, which is the last of the Grass Starter Pokemon that I needed to get. Um, so here you are with all of the Water Starters and all of the Grass Starters. Finishing things up though, we need to find all of the fire starters. Uh, so again, I did the same thing, put all of my fire statues in there. I've got a sharply raises the chance of fire types. Uh, now, the fire biomes are a little bit difficult to come across. This is the one that I just went to, which is post-game. It's under the battle zone. Um, but there are other fire like zones that you can go to. Uh, this is just the easiest one that I could find and the one that I already knew where it is. But there are a bunch that you can find. And I'm sure there's a map somewhere online that shows them all. Um, I just wanted to find this biome quickly to show the fire starter Pokemon actually spawning here. Um, so if you have completed the game, you can go to the battle zone uh, and dig down from there into the underground. And there's like all the biomes that you need. Uh, but anyway, the fire one is just here. Um, again, as you can see, I've not even discovered any of them yet. I just looked at a map. Uh, but this is the fire biome, and all of the fire starters will be able to be found in here. And again, I found them all really, really quickly as well. I was quite lucky with this. Um, so this is the first time I entered. And then uh, this, this is the second time I entered, I think. I found a Charmander, 
And then I literally found a Cynical and a Chimchar right after. But again, they all still have egg moves. Very, very useful to get. Um, so this was my Charmander encounter, which is one of my favorite starters. So I'm very glad that you can get this guy in the game. I know there's a lot of pondering with Charizard and everything like that. But I like the guy. I'm a big fan. Um, so yeah, I got up to three starters spawning in this one biome, which you can get that lucky, to be fair. It is, it is something that can happen. Uh, it's generally just down to luck. Like, sometimes it will take you forever to find a starter, and sometimes, as you see, you'll get three in one biome. So there is Chimchar there. I don't know if, like, they spawn more frequently under the battle zone, but um, this was the only place that I went to, and I found the fire starters really, really quickly. So I don't know if they're more likely under the, the battle zone and, and less likely everywhere else on the map, but I'm not sure. There's the Chimchar anyway, and then last but not least, we have Cyndaquil over here. Um, I think it just has more spawns or something because there's like how Numa Slugma there as well. Uh, but I'm really not sure. But there is the Cyndaquil. Big fan of this guy as well. Probably will be my Legends Arceus starter if they, uh, unless they have like new forms and stuff and this Typhlosion form's not that good. Um, but yeah, three starters in uh, one biome. I also found a bunch other starters in these uh, in these different biomes as well for the fire. I found like a bunch more Chimchars. I think I found like six Chimchars before I found a Torchic. found a couple more Charmanders. I didn't see another Cyndaquil though, so I don't know if Cyndaquil's a bit more rare. Uh, but this was the last um, starter Pokemon that I needed, which was the Torchic. So that's going to be everything for today's video. That is how to get every single starter Pokemon in Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl before completing the game you just need to have the national decks so i hope you guys enjoyed the video if you did make sure to drop a like down below leave a comment hope this guide helped you out uh subscribe if you're brand new for daily pokemon content that's everything from me though have a fantastic rest of your day and until next time peace <laughs>